What's up guys, Tech James here. In this video I will show you guys how to turn a console like one of these into a portable gaming setup. So this will be a setup that you can pretty much bring anywhere and you won't need any wall sockets or anything like that. This is 100% portable. So let's say you're camping or something like that. This would be perfect if you're going on holiday and you're camping. Maybe you're bored in the evening. This would be perfect if you're at a friend's house, if you're at a relative's house. It's basically a portable gaming setup that you can build using any console. These consoles right here are not portable. These are all home consoles designed to be plugged into the wall and played off a TV. So obviously we are going to need a few things. The first thing we need is obviously the console itself. I'm going to be testing this on the PlayStation TV. This is designed to not be portable at all. This is a home console pretty much. It's basically a PS Vita turned into a home console. This is designed to be plugged into your wall and then obviously displayed on your TV. Next, we're going to need something to power it. That's why I kind of dug around and found a lawnmower battery. I'm pretty sure this is the sort of battery that you'd use on a lawnmower, but, but basically this is going to be perfect for powering my portable gaming setup. It's only 12 volts, but that's pretty much all we need. The next thing I found is actually a portable plug adapter for my battery. So this is perfect for consoles. As you can see, it's got the plug socket. This is what the UK plug socket looks like. It goes that way around. And it's also got a USB at the top here. And of course, it's got the adapters. It's got the crocodile clips, I believe they're called. We've got the red one and we've got the black one. These will plug into the battery, giving us power so we can plug in a USB here. And we can also use a plug socket, which is pretty much needed for most consoles. So that is the console and the way of powering the console sorted out. Next, we need a monitor or a TV screen. Now, Li Pao actually sent me a portable gaming monitor. So this is perfect to create my portable gaming setup. Uh, this monitor is actually quite big. If I turn it around, it's around 15.6 inch. So let me show you all of the specs on the back of the box. So there you go, like I was saying, it's a 15.6 inch Type-C portable display. This is 100% portable. You can put this on your bag and basically just take it anywhere you want. It's very lightweight and it's perfect for kind of, you know, watching films or playing games. Um, like I said, maybe camping or maybe somewhere where you don't exactly have a plug socket. Or even if you're in a foreign country and you, you know, you don't have plugs for your games, you can also use this TV. It also has all the specifications here. So if you guys are interested in getting one of these there will be a link to one in the description as I said they did send this out to me to test so yeah it's looking pretty good so far the screen size is 15.6 inch the panel type is IPS which basically means the display is very crisp it looks very nice the resolution is 1920 by 1080 which is pretty much perfect for playing all games they are the visual angles and that is the brightness and it also has a speaker built in so your sound will play out of this. You don't need external speakers if you're using one of these and it also has a headphone jack. So yeah, headphone jacks. We're losing them on our phones but luckily we've still got them on our portable gaming monitors. So let's go and unbox this. I'm really excited to see what is in the box and of course this will come with all of the cables as well and then we will be able to set everything up. So let's have a look at what we've got first. It looks like we have got some kind of plug adapter. It doesn't look like this is a UK one. What is this? This must be Chinese, Chinese one? I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, this is basically just a USB plug adapter. I have got adapters for this anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. We've also got some kind of USB cable, and it's looking like a USB Type-C one. We've got a sheet of foam, and under the foam is a screen protector. So that's good, they include one. I don't normally use these, but a lot of people do like to add screen protectors to all of their devices. And then, of course, we've got the monitor itself, so we can just take this out of the foam. It's got quite a nice leather backing to it. I did do a review on another monitor, and that also had the same thing. And like I said on my last monitor review, it really does remind me of the iPad um, kind of cases. Um, it also seems to have some film over it, so we will have to take that off. But this one isn't screwed on. It's actually got magnets which hold it on. So I really like that. That is actually very nice. And yeah, we will get into this in a minute. First of all, we should probably look at what else we've got. So we've got a couple of leaflets. We have got a gift card. Oh yeah, gift card. Okay, so there is their um, website, and they've also got some other products if you guys are interested. Looks like everything they sell. 
uh, it also has some warranty in here so that is very good if it goes wrong they have got three years and six months warranty wow that's that's quite good that's very generous got a USB type C to USB type C and I guess this is a HDMI but it looks like a mini HDMI so we've got mini HDMI to regular HDMI adapter and then the last thing is also an instruction guide. I don't really use instruction guides, but it looks like it has its own menu. And yeah, we can actually get this set up soon. So it looks like that is literally it. Nothing else in the box. Now we can set up our portable gaming setup. So if you're wondering about this kind of leather case, um, because it's just held on by magnets, you can actually just take the whole thing off. So if you don't need it, you can literally take it off and put it to the side, which is very nice. I know a few of them come with them screwed on, but this one uses magnets, so it's a lot better. So let's just take off the kind of like film, and it's actually stuck at the top there. So I'm going to have to take that off without the glue getting stuck. Let's see if I can do it. There you go. There you go, perfect. A bit of glue on there, but I can always just clean that up later. And oh my gosh, this is really light. I did not expect this to be so light. Oh wow, this is really, really good. If you guys put this in your bag, you'd probably forget it was in there. And um, obviously you don't want to sit on it or anything like that. But yeah, this is really, really light. That's crazy. It's probably even like kind of similar weight to my phone. I can't believe how light that is. But yeah, it's pretty cool. But let's look at all of the ports we've got. We've got a USB Type-C port. We've seen this type of port before. It's like a um, volume kind of scroller, but it works as a menu button. So you can press it in and you can scroll through all of the you know settings. You guys get the idea. We have got a button right here, which is a power button. And it actually says what it is there. I'm being stupid. It actually tells you what it does. And on the other side, we've got HDMI. We have got a USB um, USB Type-C port, and we've got the headphone jack. So yeah, really cool monitor, Leepal monitors. So let's get my gaming setup working. So let's get everything plugged into the monitor first. You're going to need a USB Type-C to USB. Um, a black one did actually come with it. I'm just using my white one so I don't have to open it. So yeah, we've got this. Um, also, I'm going to be using the HDMI to mini HDMI. So let's just go and um, open this now. Those are literally the only cables you need to set up the monitor. Obviously, it's power and display. So let's just take off these kind of like plastic protectors. And then we can just basically just, you know, plug these in. So now we've got the cables plugged in, we have got the HDMI right here, and we have got the power cable on the other side. Next we need to set up our PlayStation TV, or just whatever console you guys are going to be using. So we're going to need a 2-pin plug, we are going to need the PSTV kind of adapter, and obviously this will plug into this. And then the plug will go into the adapter in a minute, and this right here, this power cable, will go into the back of the PSTV. So there is going to be cables everywhere, but obviously I will sort it out and make it look neater in a second. Now we're going to plug in the HDMI, so that will plug into the back here. If you guys have got anything else you want to plug in, maybe you've got custom firmware you can put in your SD card, you can put in your USB, or you can put in your Ethernet, but you're probably not going to be using Ethernet if you're you know, out camping or something like that. So that's pretty much all we need, power and HDMI. Also your controller, um, you should probably sync your controller, so you just want to plug in just like a, um, what's this called, mini USB, and then you can plug in your PlayStation 3 controller. So now we are going to sort out a battery, and this is very easy. Um, if you guys don't have one of these adapters, they're actually very useful. You can use them for lots of different things, not just um, portable gaming setups. But we're going to plug in the crocodile clips. Um, obviously get them around the right way. We've got positive and negative, black and red. So plug these in, and then this should indicate that it works when we turn it on at the back with the switch. So the switch is at the back here. It's kind of wires everywhere right now, but if I turn that on, you guys can see that the power is running. So basically all we need to do now is we need to plug in the power cable to this, and then we've also got to plug in the USB for the monitor. And once that's plugged in, um, I'm basically going to make everything neat, and then we can actually get this setup working. So um, I don't know if you guys can see right now, but my PSTV has turned on already, but the problem is there is cables everywhere, so I'm going to have to turn it off for a second, and then I can get it, you know, set up properly. 
So everything is a bit neater now. What I can actually do is go and power this on. My PS TV will turn on and we can test it out. And um, yeah, I just saw it as display for a second and the graphics look really good. It looks really, really nice on this display. So here we are on the gaming setup right now. Now the volume is very good. And I've noticed one thing, when you turn the monitor off and power it back on, the volume seems to reset. So it will be on, a, I think, about 60%. But if I turn up the volume, if I just switch it, um, basically it works like a menu. So if you press this button in, you can actually bring up a menu and you can change. So we've got brightness, this is where you change the brightness and sharpness and contrast and all of these kind of settings. We've got the image, we have got the color temperature, the OSD settings, we have got the reset, so I believe if you want to like reset all the settings you can use that. And we've also got MISC settings. This is basically you can change it between HDMI and you know that sort of thing. But let's go into the reset settings because for some reason in reset volume is in here. So what you do to access the setting is you press this button in. We can scroll down, we can I believe we can press on volume and we can start to turn it up. So yeah, you guys can hear it. It's playing this anime theme um, because I have an anime theme on. I don't know um, what this theme is, like, you know, theme song, but it's probably copyrighted. So yeah, I should probably mute this. I will turn the volume up so you guys can hear when I'm playing a game. Um, but yeah, basically, it works very nice. I really like this kind of button concept. And if you just press the power button once and press it again, it will actually close down the menu. So the, the menu button's like this one, and the power button's the one under it right here. So you can click that and close it down. So it's really simple to use, and it works well. Now, I just realized on my PS TV, I recently factory set this, and I don't have any games on here. So I'm probably... Oh, I might have a PSP game. I'm not sure. Oh, you guys can also see what PSPs look like if I launch up Adrenaline. That might also be quite a cool thing. Obviously, you can't really connect your PSP to this screen. Actually, no, you should be able to. Um, PSP 3000, I'm pretty sure, would work. But let's just launch this up anyway, and you can see what it looks like if you had a PSP connected. So that was the PS Vita screen. This is what it looked like if you have a PSP screen. And, oh, I do have some PSP games. I've got the Historia Project, and... Crossroad Crisis. I don't never heard of this game before. All right, let's play some Crossroad Crisis. <laughs> Rotate and move tiles. And oh, I'm going to be bad. Oh, well, let's just play it anyway, just for the demo, so you guys can see what games are like on the portable gaming setup. So yeah, I'd, I'd never normally play this sort of game. It's um, it looks kind of boring. But um, yeah, so we have to rotate tile, tiles or something. Oh, I see. Oh my gosh, this is... This is a not... Oh, you have to save the chicken from falling off. Oh my god, this is this is a not, this is an annoying game. <laughs> really annoying game. Because this stupid chicken is going to fall to his death every single time. Wait, you can break tiles as well? Oh, I see. Yeah, really annoying game. You guys get the idea. What I'm going to do is try this with my PS1 Classic, and then um, we can get a feel for what games are like on that as well. So for the PlayStation Classic, it's pretty much similar. You're going to need the controller. You are going to need some kind of like um, plug socket to USB adapter. I've just got an LG phone one. And then you're just going to need a micro USB cable because that is the power that the PlayStation Classic uses. You're also going to need the HDMI. So um, as you can see, that's pretty much all I need. Power, HDMI, and that should be completely fine. So there you go. Here is my PlayStation Classic setup. Let's go and press the power button. And let's see what happens. Does it work? I'm pretty sure every single HDMI device should work. And there you go, it powers it on. Now, as I said before, I think the volume is always at the same. Oh no, that time it actually saved. Okay, that was very good. So let's just wait for it to boot up and then we can test out some games. Okay, so time to test this out on the PlayStation Classic. I've put you guys even closer to the screen so you can see the gameplay even better. And you guys get the idea, you can use this of anything. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, computer. Um, I just thought it'd be cool to try a portable setup with it. Now, if you guys want to like walk around with this and playing in real life, that's fine. Just keep in mind, if you are using a console that has discs in it, you're not really going to want to like shake them about or anything. So it's kind of a setup that you'd want, you know, to put on a desk or on the floor or something but let's play some games um what shall we play i think tekken 3 is one of my favorites let's play this 
So yeah, I'm really impressed with this monitor in general. I'm going to say the only like kind of like negative thing about it is the way the power cable is positioned. Um, sometimes the power and the HDMI will actually be on the same side um, as the monitor, but because they're on separate sides, it can just make the cable kind of like set up a bit more messy. But yeah, apart from that, it's very good. So yeah, what I mean, like the power cable is here and the HDMI is here. If they're on the same side, it might be a bit better. Um, the speaker works fine. Um, it's really lightweight. That's what impresses me most. This thing is so light to hold. Um, you know, it kind of surprised me when I picked it up. But yeah, apart from that, um, I guess that is pretty much it. That is how you make a portable gaming setup. And yeah, I really like how this turned out. Um, definitely a setup I'd want to bring with me camping. When I used to go camping, I always used to get bored. But if I had a portable gaming setup with some of my favorite consoles, that would be perfect. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.